Washington. I bring greetings from the First Nation communities of Northern British Columbia, Canada. Firstly, as my First Nation pro protocol of respect, I must thank Chief Tayak of the Piscataway Indian Nation for allowing us to do business on their traditional territories and for their warm letter of welcome. I am Jackie Thomas from Saika's First Nation. I've been a government chief for many years, but more importantly, I'm a member of the Frog Clan. It's my responsibility as a Frog Clan member to take care of the water. Each of our clans have their own responsibilities and we all work in unison to steward this great land that we live on. This traditional governance system that I'm a part of has been and has survived generations and generations of attacks to assimilate us. But my traditional governance system is alive and well and will continue to be alive and well into the future. I am a mother of four and a grandmother of one. And I was raised by my own grandmother. She was a traditional medicine woman of my people. And I, w I learned early on the value of our environment. She was known as Dr. Sophie Thomas. And, she, and, she, and her words are still with me today. And what she told us was when we take care of the land, the land would take care of us. If we destroy this land, we will destroy ourselves. I'm speaking on behalf of the Yinka Dene Alliance from Northern British Columbia. And Yinka Dene translates to people of the earth. I am part of the Dene people from the northern reaches of the Northwest Territories down to my cousins, the Navajo of Arizona. We formed an alliance to stop the Enbridge Northern Gateway Project, which plans to bring tar sands oil to the coast of British Columbia, which will then be put on tankers to go to the Asian markets. The Yinka Delay, the Yinka Dene Alliance is opposed to irresponsible environmental damaging projects that puts our communities, our water, our culture, our land, our fish, our animals, and most importantly, our plants at risk. It puts at risk my neighbors to the east of me that live at the tar sands. The government doesn't recognize these people and these people have been dying of mysterious cancers, their water is polluted, their animals are sick, and Mother Earth is sick. Our alliance have used our own laws to protect our lands, and for centuries we've done this. We created the Save the Fraser Declaration, which we have traveled with across the great can land of Canada. We've promoted this recently on the Freedom Train 2012, going to the Enbridge AGM in Toronto. Currently, we have over 135 First Nations in Canada signed up to this. We have built alliances and will be signing international documents with other nations of, in, of the Indigenous world in the future. We are also endorsed by many municipalities in Canada. Most recently, uh, the city of Vancouver, Mayor Gregor Robertson signed and made a proclamation that December 13th, 2012 was Save the Fraser Declaration Day for the city of Vancouver. This was very brave because my government, the Canadian government, has been calling me an environmental extremist, 
a radical, and an enemy of Canada. All I want and my people want to do is protect this land and this water that is sacred. This water that we're talking about has no color. This, this water that we're talking about is not just water for my own people. It is water also for my neighbor ranchers, my neighbor farmers that live next door to me. It's a human issue and it impacts everyone. We are all connected. Enbridge really has brought our communities together in Canada because we've had oil spills and you've also had oil spills in this country because oil will spill. It's just a matter of when. They've spilt in the Kalamazoo, which I hear cannot be cleaned up. They've broken their promises and I understand it's even Enbridge that have done that. They've spilt oil in Red Deer, Alberta. They've spilled oil in my sister, the territories of the Lubicon Cree. They've spilled oil in the Northwest Territories, the Dene brothers and sisters that I know from the Northwest Territories. And of course, who can forget Exxon Valdez? Of course, also, in most recent memory, we have had the BP spill, which was on the news day after day, month after month. They've hurt the brothers and sisters of the Homa nation that my sister has visited. Never in my life have I ever seen white and native work together until now. Thank you, Enbridge, for doing this work for me. In Canada, First Nations are always expected to be the sacrificial lambs, lambs for our government in terms of the economy. Like the economy is a human being. Like the economy is more important than our land and our water. Water is a non-renewable resource and we can't take it for granted. The Yinka Dene Alliance have never signed a treaty. We have never gone to war. We have never ceded our territories in British Columbia, and we never will. Under the United, Na United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, we have not, the Yinka Dene Alliance have not given our free prior and informed consent to this project. In Canada, there's a judicial review process going on right now. While the process is still underway, our government has made public statements to the effect that this project will go through. Over the last year, my country has made changes to environmental laws that eases the burden for industry to discriminately, to discriminately go forward these, with these projects. Specifically, we have legislative bills C-38 and C-45 that have just been passed over the last nine months in Ottawa. There was no discussion. They did not ask Canadians permission to do this. They just did, and the time has come, and a part of our Idle No More movement also. <laughs> has been to, to let the general public know that we cannot keep taking out of greed. We must, should only take out of need. Okay, I want to share with you also my thoughts and the thoughts of uh, First Nation Canadians 
on Obama's victory down here because we celebrated, because we prayed also that this country would be led by a person of color. It gives us hope. It gives us hope that there is change that will come. My prayers are that my own country would start to wake up and take care of our people as I have faith that your president will take care of you. And, and your president will not put industry's interests above human interests. I'm here to ask you and to ask the world to help us. The Canadian government has made it clear they will approve Renbridge. We need your help to stand with us. We need your prayers. I need somebody to stand with me as the bulldozers come. I'm laying down my life. I need you to hear us and don't approve Keystone. I need to hear, hear you, support us, and help us stop Enbridge. We can't sacrifice our children's future, and we can't do it alone. I'm asking help from the Water Keepers Alliance, the Congress of American Indians. For the first time in my life, I feel like there's support of many. We can believe we can stand before big oil and unsustainable development. I want to thank you for showing up here today. I want to thank you for listening to my words and assisting me in this time of historical importance, not just for my people, but for your people. That's what's up. That's what's up. Somebody make sure. I went Come on, y'all. Somebody make some noise, y'all. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. I was warm back there, I was warm, I was warm.